Hey guys, Greg here at Let's Solve Flow's Common Ancestor of a BST, lead code number 235. It is definitely a lead code medium. So we're given a binary search tree, or a BST, and we need to find the lowest common ancestor, abbreviated as LCA. We need the LCA of the two given nodes in the BST. So these are as input over here. We are given P and Q, as well as a tree in root. So the definition of the LCA is the lowest common ancestor is defined between two nodes P and Q as the lowest node in T, the tree, that has both P and Q as descendants, where we allow a node to be a descendant of itself. That sounds very confusing, so let me paint a picture. Okay, so let's suppose we are given this binary search tree. Notice that it follows the BST properties here. For any given node, we have that all of the stuff in the left is less than it, and all of the stuff in the right is going to be bigger than it. And we're actually allowed these strict inequalities here, no need for the equal sign, because we're actually guaranteed that we're never going to have duplicate numbers. So we never have two different tens, for example. Now, before we worry about our P and our Q here, let's just get our definitions down. So this node right here is the root, and it is actually the ancestor to everything here. It's an ancestor to all of these nodes. You know, think about this as your like great, great grandfather, and uh, all of these would be considered descendants of this node here. So from this node, these are considered descendants. These are considered descendants. And from this node, for example, this is considered an ancestor, and this is also considered an ancestor. So so ancestor is the definition of basically going up the tree and descendant is kind of going down the tree. Now we can have common ancestors because if you're given two nodes, we mean an ancestor that is an ancestor of both of them. So 10 is an ancestor to both of these nodes, therefore it is a common ancestor. It is also the lowest common ancestor because there is no other common ancestor. But say for this example, if we had 15 and 25, well, their ancestors are the 20 as well as the 10 here. Okay, they have the same ancestors. But this node here, this is the lowest common ancestor, okay? It's lower down in the tree than this. This 10 here is also a common ancestor, but it is higher. But what if you had P is over there and Q is up here? The ancestors of P are this as well as that, and Q also has this as an ancestor. But for this problem, the answer is not 10. The answer is actually Q itself as 20. Because P has it as an ancestor, it's actually allowing this node to be kind of an ancestor of itself. So it's saying that this node right here, it also is kind of its own ancestor. And so for this example, it would actually be the case that this is the lowest common ancestor because these nodes both have this node as an ancestor and it's lower down than this common ancestor. Okay, so let's see some examples here. So let's say that P was equal to the one node right here and Q is equal to the seven node down here. Okay, so we know ultimately the answer should be five because both of these are ancestors, but this is the lower one. So let's see how to do that. Okay, so our lowest common ancestor, let's keep track of it so far as just the root, because the root is at least a common ancestor. It's a common ancestor to all of its descendants here, and it's even allowed to be an ancestor of itself here. So we'll keep track of so far the lowest common ancestor is going to be the root, and we'll try and find a lower one. So, so far we know the root is at least a common ancestor to these two nodes here, but can we find a better one? Well, where would we look to find a better one? Well, both of these values are less than the current node value. And because of that, we know if we were to find one, it's definitely not gonna be over here because P and Q are in this range. So we'd actually want to call this over here. And so now this is updated to be the lowest common ancestor. And so now if we were to find a better one, where would we look? Well, this is actually where we're splitting them up here. So five is actually between the values of these two nodes here. Before we had up here where it was strictly that both of the values were less than 10 here. Both of them were less than 10. So we know it's going to be over here. But if we're at this range here and we're splitting them up here, five is between these two nodes here. Well, you're not going to find a lower common ancestor than what you've already seen right here. Because if you were to go over here, well, that's not going to be an ancestor to this node. And same thing. If you go over here, that's not going to be an ancestor to this node. So if they're not ancestors, well, you can't have a lowest common ancestor. And so right here, this would actually be your lowest common ancestor. So if you're in the case where you're splitting them up here, well, you'd actually just want to kind of return this LCA right away. 
Okay, so that's one case that could come up here. What if we had that P was five and Q was one? Okay, so now it's P is here and Q is here. Well, we'd again have the root here. And so the LCA would currently be the root. Can we find a better one? Well, same thing as we said before, we'd want to look in the left side, but now we've found P. Okay, we found one of the nodes. And at this point, you know, we're going to update that we've seen five here, but we're actually done. Okay, we're not gonna find a better one here because if this is P, or even if it was Q, it doesn't matter which one. If this is one of the nodes, well, you're not gonna find a lowest common ancestor going either way because the whole point is a lowest common ancestor and you're allowed to be an ancestor of yourself. So this is an ancestor to P and this is also an ancestor to Q here. And so this is gonna be the best one you can find. You're not gonna find a lower one over here because that's not gonna be an ancestor to P anymore. Or same thing, if, if this happened to be Q, then it wouldn't be an ancestor to Q. So if you find one of the nodes that you were looking for, then you'd want to again return what you already had because you're not going to find a better one. Okay, so so far our LCA is equal to the root and we're going to put this in a list so it can be a proper global variable. Now we want to perform our search. And if you're in the case where this actually isn't a root, that means we've gone all the way down to the bottom here. And so we already have found the best LCA possible. And so we're just going to get out of this. Now, otherwise we are a valid root. And so we're only going to force this to look at the lowest common ancestor as we go through the roots here. So we actually have a newest LCA. So we will set that equal to the current node we're looking at, which is root. Now from here, if the root is P or the root is Q, we know what to do here here. We saw that we just want to return here. Okay. Ultimately our function at the end here, this lowest common ancestor function, this is going to return our LCA here. If we know that the root is P or that the root is Q, well, there's no more searching to do because again, we saw we can't go any lower. That would not be an ancestor of whichever node that it is. So you just want to return in this case. Okay, otherwise, we want to know if we can search for it somewhere. And you can search for it somewhere, for example, if root.val is less than the p.val, and we have that the root.val is less than the q.val. If the root's value is less than p, and it's also less than q, well, then we're actually safe to search in the right side, okay? So we can search on root.write. Otherwise, we'd basically just write the mirror of this. So if it's actually that the root.val is greater than p.val, and we have that the root.val is greater than the q.val, okay, we're in the scenario when we'd want to search in the left. So we'll try and find it in the left. Otherwise, if we're in this scenario, well, we actually know that this is not true and this is not true, meaning that we're actually splitting them up here. So the roots value is actually between them. And when the roots value is between them, we're not gonna find a better ancestor than what we're already currently at. And so in that case, we always just return. Okay, so from here, we just need to call our search function. We'll call search on the root. And then we also want to return LCA at zero, which is our final answer here. So if we were to run that, that will work. Okay, so the time and space complexity of this, this is a binary search tree where we are following the BST property. We're not just looking at all of the nodes here, we're following the BST property and also escaping early at times. So the worst that we're possibly going to do here is actually gonna be big O of H, where H is the height of the tree. Uh, in general, this should closely be related to the log of N if it is balanced, but that's not necessarily the case. So we'll do the time is the height. We're just gonna go down the entire height of the tree at most. And the space complexity of this, this is done in a recursive matter as we go down through the height. So the space complexity will also be big O of H. Drop a like if this was helpful, guys. I hope it was and have a great day. Bye-bye.